All right, so I've got the Flight Scope Mevo Plus hooked up to the latest generation iPad Air. Today we're going to do some testing with a 58 degree sand wedge. We're going to try to do some slow swings uh, to make sure the Mevo Plus is picking up uh, the club head speed, which some people were reporting uh, club head speed not being picked up. So I've got that iPad Air uh, connected with the HDMI dongle to my projector. I'm going to grab the 58 degree wedge and uh, I'm going to start taking some slow shots, or slow chips I should say. on the screen. I can probably just put it in list mode. So that club head speed was 36. We'll just go ahead and put it in list. It'll be a lot easier that way. We'll take a little uh, spin on that. 4471. Give a little more of a three quarter swing. Well, hit that a little fast. So there's a 63. Just go a little faster this time. There's 70. And those shots right there were not with the dot on the ball. Some people have reported that if you want to see higher spin, you need to play with a dot. So same ball, Pro V1, dot facing the screen. Let's see if the spin changes. Notice the club head speed though is reading every single time. No issues so far. Let's do the short chip again. We'll scroll down. Looks like the spin did go up on the short chip. From what I'm seeing here, 6,000 on uh, 40 mile per hour, 40 yard shot. Flight Scope has reported you should face the dot towards the screen, which I'm doing. All right, we'll take about a three quarter now. it always went on to the next one. I'm reporting higher spin now, so it looks like that uh, theory is correct. That it reads, it reads just fine without the dot, but if you want to get an accurate spin, you need to play with, uh, with the dot on the ball. Take note, when putting, they suggest having two balls. One ball for putting without a dot. So when, you, when putting, and simulating uh, on like E6 or TGC, you should use a ball without the dot when putting. All right, here's about an 80 or 90% swing. Oh, that was a fat one again. Let's take a better one. I don't understand why it's going up every time in the list. Wish it would uh, keep going down to the next shot. But look at the spin though on that, 86, 83. So definitely a much better spin reading with the dot. I haven't missed a club head speed yet though. So that was 70 miles, 75 miles an hour uh, in a 66 yard shot. All right, I'm gonna try to do about 90% again since that was a pretty bad shot. That was a pretty decent shot. 99.53. I had a 79 mile per hour club head speed. Carried 91 yards. Once again, this is a 58 degree. It's a Callaway Mac Daddy S grind 58 degree. All right, let's go back to some small chips. Let's say we have a really small chip. Um, let's say 
10 yards. That actually went 13 yards. The clubhead speed was 23 miles per hour, and the spin was 3406. Very, very light chip. All right, let's try a flop. Short flop. I'm going to try to flop it. Oh, let's try to flop it 20 yards. That was a 21.5 yard flop shot. Club head speed was 32. Spin. 32.75. All right. Let's try to do a 40 yard or so flop shot. That was not a good strike at all. That was behind the ball. Only a 22 yard carry. Spin 47, club head speed 39.3. Let's get a little better swing together here and see if I can actually get a 40 yard flop shot here. Did not swing a club once before doing this, so probably my own fault. So that should be a lot closer. 42.4 yards, so the distance I was looking for. Uh, 44 mile per hour club head speed, and 69.10 for spin. So definitely a good example of that farther flop shot. I mean, that was exactly what I was looking for once I actually, you know, struck the ball the way I should have, or swung the way I should have. So um, let's try some low, low chip shots. All right, let's say that you're just trying to do a little bump and run. Um, Let's say it's a you know, 10, 10, 12 yard bump and run. It missed the club head speed on the bump and run, which is interesting. Have not missed the club head speed yet. I wonder what triggered at that time. You can see the spin was obviously lower. Carry was right what I was looking for. Um, let's go a little farther. Let's do another bump and run. And let's say we want to do 20 yards. I still do not understand why it goes up every time. That's so annoying. Or maybe it goes to highlighted shots. So that did not go as far as I wanted to. It did catch the club head speed though. So I'd say we almost need to go back to that that lighter bump and run shot and see why uh, maybe the club and the ball are so low. Um, and I just did a quick adjustment when I set this up. I mean, it, uh, it, it should be lined up fair. I mean, I know that the angle is fair, but all right, so here we go. Let's just try this. Short bump and run, 12 yards. That was really low. I think it even missed that. That was probably a little too low for indoor. Barely even hit the screen. Let's try that again. I wouldn't really expect it to read that. I mean, that last shot was a little ridiculous. So that's it. So it looks like the Mevo can't differentiate the club from the ball when it's low. When it's that low uh, from what I'm seeing because I can do that same shot that same 10 yard shot and bring the ball up a little farther excuse me and it's fine so here we go same shot bringing the ball up in the air a little further probably gonna read it no problem there you go club head speed 20 miles per hour 8.1 yards so that was super short Let's get it a little further this time. We'll try to do 15 yards. That might be 
a little farther than 15 yards. That was too much backswing. Oh no, that was close. 13.2. Felt like it might have gone a little farther. 22 mile per hour. Club head speed. Spin down in the 26 range on those little shots. So let's try to get that spin up. Let's see if I can do a do like a 70 yard approach shot. Scrape the ground a little bit there. That was only 50 yards. Spin 77.32. Reading the club head speed again, no problem. Definitely seems to be one of those things. I, mean, I might be able to report that to Flight Scope that the ball is super, super low. And they might tell you, you know, it's an impossible read, you know, for a radar unit. You get the accuracy of radar, but it doesn't, it's not perfect in every single situation. I don't think. In indoor simulation, you'd be chipping the ball so low that it's not even 12 inches off the ground. I mean, I don't think that's going to be the case much. So, all right. Should be a little closer. 81 yards. 9,000 spin. So I think that's enough examples. I mean, there's uh, there's 19 shots. We'll hit one more. We'll just do 20 shots. Um, let's try to do a super short flop again to show that when that ball gets up in the air, it, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be a flop. We'll just do a short chip. But when that ball gets up in the air, it has no problem reading it. So we'll do a really short, you know, Eight yard chip again. Oh, they missed that one. Interesting. I've had like no misses on on those. Let's try it again. So this is the first. There you go. For eight point nine yards. First time I've had any misses, and it's set up on the angle for FS Golf versus the angle that is used in E6, which I wonder if it makes a difference. Um, you know, I'll tell you what, I can fire up really quick E6, and we can just do a really, really uh, sure comparison of both. E6 and FS Golf next to each other. To see who's reading better, I guess, and which which integration is better. I guess is the best way to put it. I get my HDMI switched around here. Show you guys how to go to the practice area really quick. Not that I mean most people would know how to do that, but so practice. Chip and putt. And let's go to I guess we'll just go to the chip and putt area. That'll be the easiest. And then basically you can put the ball wherever you want. So I don't know how far away that is. You can go farther away. It's kind of funny, you can go like in the grass. That's pretty good though because that was like a 30 yard, 30 yard chip right there. So why don't we chip it up and over 30 yards first. And see how that works and what kind of readings we get. So 30 yard chip. Oh, you know what? I'm 
not connected. My uh, iPad's still reading off. That's my own fault there. I can do that really quick though. So it's connected. So this needs to disconnect. Turn that off real quick. That's the one thing we've noticed you cannot connect two devices to the Mevo Plus. Let's try that one more time. So it's connected specifically the laptop now. Let's try a normal, first, first one we're going to do is a normal chip. Trying to place that dot right towards the screen being lazy. This is still not connected. Let's try it one more time. Calibrating. All right. Sorry about that. Switching systems unexpectedly kind of threw me off. Spin, carry, club head speed, all there. So that's similar data than what we were seeing from FS call. What about 30 yard bump and run? How about that? Oh, you know what's funny is? is the device I have set still for FS Golf and it's not alerting me that it's off alignment. When is it going to alert me that it's off? Adjust your device, 12 degrees. There we go. So I would have been like 14, 15 degrees there and it was still working. That's surprising. That's really surprising. Okay. So now we're at that 12 degree range and we're going to try to do a bump and run and see what happens here. Well, look at that. Reach the bump and run no problem. Rolls out really far though. I feel like that was hit thin. And it definitely felt thin, so I might have to get a better ball strike to give us a good example. Backspin was 38.61, carry 37 yards. But it had all the all the different information. It didn't miss anything. So, bump and run again, trying to be more clean. as I would like it, but once again, club head speed, back spin. All right, let's do a big flop, like we had to get over something. See how the ball stopped? Assuming it's going to have a much higher spin, 71.45. So how about short bump and runs? Let's change where the ball is. 49 foot bump and run. It works for me. 49 foot bump and run. There we go. Oof, that was super low. Look at that ball roll out though. <laughs> yeah, I think what we're finding here is, is that for simulation golf, the device reads much better 
for little short shots and little bump and run type shots in the simulation environment versus the way you would set it up in FS Golf. Because FS Golf is made for primarily hitting full shots and not little half shots. Um, but it's good to know. All right, so and one more little bump and run. And it didn't miss anything there. It, it, uh, it got everything. One more little tiny bump and run here. That was super low, kind of fast, but yeah. felt like felt like that was fast. So it even went over that little hump. All right, club head speed 9.8. So it shows you how low of a club head speed it can actually read. All right, flop, short flop. did what it was supposed to. Okay. Just for our own reasoning, I guess, let's just hit a full shot here. It doesn't matter where it goes. And just see what the spin is. We'll do like three quarter of a wedge. shot. <laughs> Let's see what the spin was. 7164. Not bad. Wasn't a perfect strike. Let's try one more. I'll try to get some super high spin on this. Straight. It should have some high spin. Ninety four oh one. There we go. Well, hopefully this is a good example for anyone that was trying to figure out the difference between FS Golf and True Golf E six with really short chipping and you know really really short low punch shots and, and uh you know bump and run type shots uh i think we've kind of narrowed down what the issue is some people were seeing fs golf not read some club head speed and change things up and i think the difference is the angle of the unit the difference between fs golf being for full shots and this setup at 12 degrees being for simulation once again flight scope mebo plus